So I come here early in the morning to put down what few thoughts I have in my head. And then I think I got everything in order, so I take Harley home. And, and then I drive back to the church, and, and I, I got to apologize, but I was driving east on 131st Street. And I came up to Tampere, Lake Tampere, and there was a mist over the, the water. And there was a guy in a boat, and there were like six ducks floating across the water. And the sunrise was coming up. It was kind of in between some pink clouds. And I said, oh my God. I mean, I, you, you could have been on the other side of the world. It was just so peaceful and so beautiful. And I had just turned on the news before that. And they had pictures of the Gulf Coast. Like that one town, there's nothing left. And they talked to people who lost everything from their underwear and socks, to their coffee pots, to their house, to their cars, to everything. And I thought of the contrast between that peaceful scene at Langtam Pier and the sunrise, and the sun also rises over the Gulf Coast too. And just the hope that they can put things back together. And they will, because that's who we are as human beings. And you know, nobody knows each other's journey when we walk in the door here. You know, like Maddie says, uh, each one of us has a heart song, a soul, a spirit, and yours is unique and mine is unique, but somehow, some way, it's inside our heart song is where God speaks to us. And that's why it's just so important to just every day to do the best we can with what we've got. Because each of us has gifts, and each of us has time. And our calling every day is to take our gifts and to take our time and to use it to make a difference, even if that difference is very, very small. Well, anyway, I'm not sure if any of you paid attention to the gospel lesson this morning, but Jesus is so wise. And he challenges us. So a guy comes up to him and asks the question, which maybe silently we ask the question ourselves. Jesus, what do I have to do to get to heaven, to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know the commandments. He says, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honor your parents. And you can just see the guy say, yeah, well, I've been doing that since I was a kid. I'm in, I'm in. And then, oh, one more thing. He says, you got to take all your possessions and you sell them and you give all your money to the poor and then you can come and follow me. And the man is shocked. He said, wait a minute, I got, he has lots of stuff. And so instead of leaving Jesus' presence happy and uplifted, he is grieving because he has all this stuff and he's supposed to give it away and share it with other people. Now, I'm not the richest guy in the world, but I got stuff just in my closet. I got all kinds of stuff and a lot of the stuff I give away to these kids. And so I'm thinking to myself, what is Jesus really meaning when he says, give everything to the poor and sell all you got? Because he says, in my kingdom, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. You know, in religion and in life, it's easy to make judgments. And I think we all know people that feel like they have the right kind of religion and they have the right to judge who's going to get to heaven and who's not. And I think each one of us, even though we may not think about it a lot, we'd like that assurance that when we leave this earth or our loved ones leave this earth, that we'd like to know there's something on the other side. There's a kingdom with God, and somehow maybe we'll even be reunited with those we loved and said goodbye to. We want to believe in the power of goodness and kindness. We want to know that God is with us every step of the way. On the other hand, I think most of us have gone through stuff where our faith and our beliefs have been tested. If you were one of those people that lost everything in the hurricane, maybe for a few moments your faith is shattered. Even when I went to visit Vern the other day, you know, I said, Vern, with what I've gone through the last five years, and I think of Linda, whatever you've gone through, and some of the stuff you've gone through, I said, Vern, in this five-year journey with cancer and all this other stuff, do you ever lose your faith? He says, no. It gets tested. <laughs> it gets a little bruised, and I get tired, 
but he knows God is with him every step of the way. And then yesterday I called the family of one of our members. And these are two older people that have lost both their son and their daughter to serious illnesses. And so I called him on the phone. They live in Tennessee. And we talked for a long time. He talked to me. He says, Don, I know you're a man of God. And I said, well, you don't know me. <laughs> he said, Don, I know you're a man of God, but I've lost both my kids. They never could be healthy enough to have a family. And now my wife and I are alone. And I wonder why God lets this happen to people like me. Well, that's just human. And I said, don't be afraid to say that kind of stuff because God had handled it because I have no idea why. Because life is a circle. The circle can be random. And we never, ever know what's going to happen because oftentimes bad things do happen to good people. And I guess in the world around us, there's lots of reasons to lose hope. But you know something? The only thing we can do is take solace and somehow hope in random acts of kindness to make a difference to one person, one moment, in your little corner of the kingdom. I was thinking about the circle of life. I went to see Frankie, who she's gone through so much too, and she's now at Payless Hospital. And uh, for the last 15 years, uh, I don't know, I can't even imagine going through what she has. Well, she's not going to get home for a while, and she's got this cat. And the cat is all by itself in the house, and someone's got to take care of it. And a lot of people are allergic to cats. And I said, I know somebody. I know somebody who doesn't have much, very humble, but she loves cats, and she rescues cats, and she fosters cats. And sure enough, this lady took in Frankie's cat, and even called Frankie and said, your cat even has its own bedroom in my house. <laughs> well, the next day, this lady who was generous enough to do that, her bathroom went crazy. All kinds of leaks and water all over the place. And she called us and said, I, 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 I need someone to help me, but I don't have the money to pay for it. So I called the God Squad, which means a plumber and a guy with a thing that can dig into concrete and some younger guy that'll carry away all the stuff and do what he's told. And she said, well, how am I going to pay for this? And I said, that's not your problem. You just take care of that cat because you may not have much, but inside your heart, you're the richest person in the world. And somehow, some way, in that circle of life, there's the God Squad and a cat and a love bucket at a church on LaGrange Road. It'll all be taken care of. You see, if, if I took Jesus seriously now, I would have sold some of my possessions yesterday and paid the bill myself. But that's really not what Jesus is talking about. He doesn't want you or me to sell everything. He just wants us to share from the very heart and soul of who we are. Yes, we need to obey the commandments. But most of all, we need to obey the voice that's inside our heart song. And remember, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And that's good news. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed. It's on page 105. <laughs>